Hello Year 5 and welcome to our next lesson where we're looking at computers around us and today we are looking at the World Wide Web. And you might be thinking, but didn't we look at the internet last time? Well actually, the internet and the World Wide Web aren't the same thing. Lots of people confuse them and think they are, but they're actually different things altogether. They're very closely linked, but they are different systems. So the internet is a huge network of computers that are all connected together. The World Wide Web, or WWW as we shorten it to, is a collection of web pages that's found on these computers. So when we talk about the World Wide Web, we're talking about the web pages, not the computers connected together. So when someone says, I'm going to go on the internet, what they really mean is, I'm going on the World Wide Web. So how did the web begin? Well... The web was invented by a British gentleman called Tim Berners-Lee, who has since been knighted, so he's now Sir Tim Berners-Lee, who was trying to find a way for scientists to easily share their data from experiments. Hypertext and the internet had already existed, so the network of computers that were connected together already existed, but no one had thought of a way that you could link documents together easily using the internet. So... Tim Berners-Lee suggested using three main technologies that meant that all computers could understand each other. And these were HTML, URL, and HTTP. Now, we'll go into a bit more detail on what they are another time, but these are the same things that are used today. So that meant that these computers could talk to each other over the internet and share a document with each other. He also made the world's first web browser, so now today you might use something like Google Chrome or Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge or Safari. They're all modern browsers, but he made the first one that allowed you to see the web pages on the World Wide Web. So, why is the web so important? Well, the World Wide Web opened up the internet to everyone, not just scientists. Before then, the internet had literally been used by universities to connect their computers together. But now, it was possible for everybody who owned a computer and who had access to the internet to use the World Wide Web to look at web pages from other computers. Then we can communicate, share information, it allowed people to share their thoughts, and even now, up to the modern day where we're using it for social media, we're using it for YouTube, it's really grown and exploded since Tim Berners-Lee developed the first web browser. So we're going to have a little look here at the timeline of the World Wide Web, where it started and how it developed. So we're going to start off in 1989. And that is with Tim Berners-Lee. He wrote the original proposal for the World Wide Web. He wrote about the technologies needed to make the World Wide Web work. His proposal included those three main technologies, HTML, URL and HTTP. These are the things that were needed and would remain in use up until today. So that was back in 1989. Then, moving forward a couple of years, in 1991, the first website went live at CERN in Europe. So that is a university centre um, in Belgium, and Switzerland, sorry. Um, and Sim Berners-Lee created his first ever website and it was hosted on a computer in CERN in Switzerland, which was the research centre he was working at. Then a year later, in 1992, the first web server outside of Europe was set up in Stanford University in the USA. All the early web servers had been up, set up in Europe, but this was the first one in America. There were only 10 web servers in the world in 1992. Now there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions. And then a year later, in 1993, CERN allowed anyone to use the web protocols and code for free. The technologies that had been developed to make the World Wide Web became open source, so free that anyone could use them. People started to create websites for personal and online businesses. The number of known web servers increased to 50 in 1993. And then in 1994, telecommunications companies started to provide internet access. Access to the World Wide Web became available in people's homes, and the number of web servers increased to 623. In 1994, the World Wide Web Consortium, 
that W3C was founded by Tim, Sir Tim Berners-Lee. The W3C is the organisation that makes sure the World Wide Web continues to develop. So those are the steps that really started off the World Wide Web. So what's happened since? Well, the web's changed a lot since it was first created. The first websites were made up of simple pages or just words and pictures, a bit like online books or magazines. Most people couldn't create their own web pages, and back then, to make a web page, you had to write it in code. You had to write it in the HTML code. But since then, we've had Web 2.0. As the web began to develop, people started to communicate and share more. They used social network sites and blogs, and it became a lot easier to make your own content on the web and to share it. This new type of web became known as Web 2.0. Although the way people use the web has changed, the technologies haven't. Many of the technologies that run the first web pages are still in use today. And the modern web is still changing and it's still growing. Search engines have become better at reading, understanding and processing information. They find clever ways to find the content we want and can even show us, can even show us other things we might be interested in. So, here's what I'm challenging you to do today. Bronze is to write a definition of the World Wide Web, so don't get confused between the internet and the World Wide Web. Make sure you define what the World Wide Web is. Silver, list devices at home that have access to the World Wide Web. Again, some of your things will have access to the internet, but not the World Wide Web. So be careful that you know what the World Wide Web, World Wide Web is. It's like access to web pages. Okay. Gold, make a timeline of events in the creation of the World Wide Web. So we've just been over that, so you'll want to rewind the video and look that back to do that. And finally, a bit of a challenge to research the difference between HTTP and HTTPS. Now, I've not talked about that. You'll have to go away and find that for yourself. The vocab that I've gone over today, we've got HTML, which is short for or stands for Hypertext Markup Language. This is the code that is used to create websites. You've got URL, the Uniform Resource Locator. This is the address. So this is actually the web address that we use to find a website. You've got HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This allows the HTML to be requested and transmitted between browsers and web servers via the internet. And a web server is a computer where files are stored and can be accessed using HTTP. Okay, guys, best of luck with all of those, and I'll see you soon.